Um, I'm Tracy Lauder. I'm the chair of the Mass Communications Department. I have been at Emory & Henry. I just finished my 17th year. And uh, it's a pleasure today to gather some MassCom people around and talk about what we do, what we love to do. Um, what I hope to do is I've got uh, a few things I wanted to go over with you just about the program in general. And then I have two members of our faculty here. I wanted to have an opportunity for you to talk with them. And then I also have two alums and maybe another one uh, joining us. They're all busy at their work, their day jobs today that might jump in and talk to you a little bit about their experiences too. And then I hope to leave plenty of room for questions at the end um, and that we can answer some questions for you. Um, my background, I actually came to higher ed um, when I was in my late 30s and I started out I worked in magazine journalism I worked in Southern Living magazine I worked for cooking light and Weight Watchers magazine I ran my own um, business and did agency work in Birmingham Alabama and was a copywriter and a creative director and started teaching at Samford University and loved it and decided I would go get a PhD and do that full-time and so um, I, that's, uh, I've been in, like I said, at Emory & Henry for 17 years. Uh, last year, I actually left Emory & Henry for about six months and I worked for Ballad Health, which is a large healthcare organization in Southwest Virginia and Northeast Tennessee as a director of marketing and communications for strategic communication. And I learned a lot. It was great to learn more about my region. It was great to learn about healthcare communication. I worked with some incredible people, including some Emory & Henry alums, but I missed higher ed. I missed working with students. I missed being in the higher ed background and Emory and Henry was fortunate. Uh, I was lucky enough that they brought me back in to work in the department. So that's kind of my story. Um, I thought what I'd do is start by going over the program, the our program just a little bit. And as much as I hate PowerPoint and I hate PowerPoint with words, since I couldn't give you a handout, I thought that I would um, share something with you. And so forgive my Zoom technology. And I'm going to Try to get this going here. So you all, I'll ask the question. You can see my slides <laughs> for sure. So I just wanted to talk a little bit and go over some high points. This is kind of my spiel about the department. And one of the things that is cool about the MassCom program at Emory and Henry College is you don't have to choose a track. So if you were to go to Virginia Tech or even some small schools, University of Tennessee, they're going to all say you have to be in TV or you have to be in journalism or you have to be in public relations or stratcom or social media or graphic design. And at Emory and Henry, we feel like it serves students best to learn a little bit about everything. We feel like that helps you decide what your passion really is. We also help think it prepares you for the job market. So often people want people who can do a little bit of everything. You may even get into a job working at a newspaper, writing a news story, and someone may say, but can you shoot video and come back and edit it? And you'll be able to say, yes, I could do a little bit of that. You can do a little graphic design. We also feel like it gives you more, la more um, latitude in the job market when you get out of school. Uh, but the difference is what you can't, what we do emphasize is that you specialize the way you want to through upper level electives that you'll choose to take. And I'll share with you some of those through the internships you do and through campus media. So your experience, you shape your education and to do what you want to do. Um, the other way that you puts you, uh, sets you apart is even though our college does not require a minor, our program does require a minor. Um, most of our students double major, which is fairly uh, doable. And we feel like that sets you apart in the job market. So it's really cool to be teaching a class and in there I have uh, students that not only are mass comm majors, but they're also experts in at least one other thing. Um, some of the, I've listed here some of the more popular uh, double majors. But you can double major or minor in anything that interests you. Uh, anything that interests you, we want you to, to make this your degree. And then the way our program works is in the mass comm program is you'll get some foundational skills courses, but those will also be grounded in theory. So you'll learn about media studies, the intersection of, of 
media and culture, persuasion theory, law and ethics. So we don't think it's enough that we send you out with skills. We want to send you out with an understanding of the world and your place in it and your place as a citizen. Uh, being a, a, a media message producer gives you an extraordinary amount of power. And we want you to use your power for good in the world. And so we'll be talking about that. And in addition, if you're coming to Emory and Henry, you've chosen a liberal arts education. So you'll get a broad based education that will support that mass comm major and the minor. And I put an additional note here that uh, if you have the option, uh, we require statistics and some folks will take, take a math at a community college. And I always like to remind them that we require a stats class. Um, I mentioned that you can specialize through upper level electives and here's a list of some of the upper level electives that we offer at least every two years, sometimes more often. And we also offer a lot of special topics. Um, Dr. Finney, who I'll introduce to you in a minute, he's actually teaching a special topics this fall cross listed with political science on the presidential election. And our president of the college who has a political science degree will be teaching that with him. So we have the, the freedom to do a lot of interesting things that will serve our students and our community well. I mentioned internships. This is also where our students specialize. Um, we require at least one, we recommend two, and most students will do two, um, but increasingly students will do three internships. You can do them during the academic year. I always try to get my students into an internship that summer after the sophomore year. Um, we have lots of choices near campus. Some folks coming from large urban areas wonder where are you gonna do an internship in Southwest Virginia? We have more opportunities than we have students to place in them. Them. And even now, we have a lot of virtual opportunities. Uh, even during our COVID crisis, we have a lot of virtual opportunities to work in workplaces. And if you like to say, if you have a great Aunt Edna that lives in Denver and I'll put you up for the summer, we'll help you find an internship in Denver. So we're, we feel like experience is where you, that shapes who you are as a mass communication professional. You also can specialize through campus media opportunities. Um, we have a community radio station. That broadcast, we have our departmental uh, TV station, which Professor Treese will talk to you more about. We have a student newspaper and a student yearbook where a lot of our students like to work as well. And then uh, what kind of jobs await you? I, uh, our students go on to do such a variety of things. I will admit that the majority of our, our students end up at some point in strategic communications, media relations, public relations, marketing. That's where a lot of the jobs are, but many, many of them are in journalism and news. Um, and we also have people that go on, we have an alum who runs the film studies program at George Mason, and a lot of our students end up in education, uh, journalism education and different types of educational programs. And then we too, um, some students, it's not as traditional in a mass communication program, but we do prepare students well for graduate studies. Um, if you go through our program, you will be ready to go to graduate school if you, if you do the things you need to do. And that could be more of a professional focused grad program program or uh, media and culture. And um, Dr. Finney may want to talk to you a little bit more about that. That's one of his areas of expertise. Um, what else do you need to know? We have a fabulous alumni network and they're here for you. In fact, we have three, at least three in our room today. Um, they love to give back, offer internships, support, informational talks, uh, shadowships. We also have a very collegial and collaborative program. Um, unlike uh, maybe some programs, you're gonna get to know everybody in your major. You're gonna work collaboratively in the class. You'll find the faculty work together. Um, it's not, a, you won't be a loner if you join the MassCom family. And also that our students get jobs. Even during trying times, our students are well positioned to apply for a variety of jobs. I'm working with some recent grads right now. And some of our students also get jobs that require a few years experience out of school because they have so much experience while they're in school and I'm working with a couple alums that are looking at that just graduated on their jobs right now. So what I'd like to do now is turn this over to um, Dr. Finney who can tell you a little about himself, um, what his background is, how long he's been at the college, and um, kind of the things he specializes in and anything else that I missed that you'd like to add Dr. Finney? Okay, uh, hey everybody, thank you, uh, Dr. Lauder. Uh, I'm Mark Finney. Um, I have been here eight years or so. 
Um, so I have a pretty non-traditional background for mass communications professor. Um, I've done a little bit of work in radio. I've done a little bit of work in television. Um, I've done a little bit of work with newspapers, but that's not been my focus. Um, I have a pretty academic record when it comes to uh, studying mass communications. In fact, uh, the reason that I study mass communications is because I started off getting a master's in conflict analysis and resolution and began to see that communication plays a really important role in the ways that international conflicts get, um, uh, get pursued, the way that um, parties interact with one another, the way that peoples come to understand each other. And uh, I developed an interest in understanding how uh, news in particular plays a role in the way that conflicts um, exist in our world, the way we come to know other groups of people. And that's my area of research today. Uh, I'm right now, I mentioned a little while ago that I'm doing data collection right now. And what that has meant is that every day this month, I have read Cuba's national newspaper and recorded data about uh, the stories that they have been covering. Uh, what the topic is that they're covering, who they are uh, quoting in their stories, uh, what kinds of opinions or ideas are evident in their stories. And I'll be taking that research along with a bunch of other scholarship that I've done on the United States and Cuba and using that to try to develop our understanding of how this conflict between these two countries um, has been represented um, both in media and also in, uh, in person and uh, what that might mean in terms of the way that we interact with one another. Uh, so my um, approach to mass communications is one that's really uh, very scholarly. Uh, I like to think about mass comm as a, um, a way of developing understanding uh, from a normative point of view and also sort of the way that we begin to uh, use media uh, purposefully and sometimes unpurposefully to share ideas and come to know each other or sometimes come to not know each other. Um, as Dr. Lauder mentioned, I'm teaching a class on the presidential election this fall. Um, I'm doing that with President Wells. The president of the college is uh, co-teaching the course with me. And we are gonna be looking at the role of, you know, the ways that we can approach the election through our joint lenses of political science. He's a political science professor and mass communications, what those two sort of scholarly perspectives can teach us about uh, presidential elections here in the United States and also in other places, and also to do some real-time analysis of what's going on you know, while it's happening, which is pretty exciting. Um, I do take students to Cuba uh, fairly regularly uh, with a colleague in the Spanish department. So uh, one of the things, none of y'all have traveled with me. Uh, one of the things that you might wanna think about doing in, when you come to Emory and Henry is signing up for our course. We do a two week trip to Cuba um, where we uh, visit with, other, with students from Cuba um, at some of their universities and also uh, try to sort of understand the culture. And we tie it typically to a mass communications project. Uh, last time we did the trip, we uh, produced a documentary film that was then, um, well, maybe produced is too strong. Yeah, no, we produced it, um, but one of our seniors directed it and uh, did a lot of the post, did all of the post-production and put it into a pretty cool 25 minute film um, about our experiences. I think next time we go, the plan is to um, do a podcasting um, exercise where we'll develop a series of audio uh, stories based on our experiences uh, there in Cuba. What else, do, what else should I say, Dr. Lauder? You're muted. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Um, that you teach, you usually teach our media writing classes. That's right. And and, uh, and and that all of our faculty have a nice blend of, you know, looking at the world through those lenses, as you point out, and then also uh, bringing bringing all that to the skills classes we teach. And so appreciate you doing that. Yeah, yeah. I teach uh, the our our media writing courses. I teach intro, obviously. Um, I teach some of our upper division concepts courses, and I also um, am one of the co-directors of our Core 300 program. And Core 300 is our um, junior level course for the liberal arts core of courses um, at the college. 
Uh, the, this is a course that's designed to help students develop an understanding of themselves in the world, um, especially in terms of uh, developing strong sense of uh, civic engagement and global citizenship. Thank you. That was perfect. That was perfect. Oh, great. I'm going to segue because uh, Brent Trish is going to be a nice uh, transition because he is an alum of Emory and Henry's Mass Comm program in 2001, I believe. Um, but he has recently joined our faculty and is working on becoming a full-time member of our faculty. So I'm going to turn it over to Professor Trish to tell you a little bit about his journey and then his place on our faculty and some opportunities for students. Yeah, I come at it from a little different direction than Dr. Finney. Um, I come from the world of work where I spent about 20 years, um, but I am an Emory Henry gra graduate of class of 2001, and I'm actually interested in Mark's class because I was also political science while I was at Emory Henry, so I would be interested in sitting in on that class, so if I can find time, I might sneak in there once in a while, but uh, my area of concentration is electronic media, so that's audio, video production, and so forth. Um, like I said, I've spent almost the last 20 years working various communications-related jobs. Um, my first decade I spent as a photojournalist for a top 100 television market, um, where I became a pretty accomplished videographer. Um, but I was also a morning show producer. I became a photographer, and eventually they sucked me into being a reporter, so I became a reporter for the last two years of my time in television. Uh, I left television to return to Emory Henry. Um, I just really was excited about the opportunity to come back to my alma mater and serve as the director of media relations, where I was able to use all of these great contacts that I had made over the last um, decade to be able to help promote and uh, market the college uh, in the region. So I did that for almost um, eight years. And then I moved in, uh, I guess, 20... 18, I moved over to the athletic department. I was really excited about an opportunity over there to oversee all of the marketing, communications, and game day promotion for our 20 plus sports teams. So it's been a really great opportunity to be doing that. It's exciting, it's busy. Um, but the last few years, I, I, I kind of had caught on to the bug of, of really wanting to join the faculty. It's hard to believe, but I've been teaching in some form or fashion in the mass comm department for um, five years now. I started out kind of doing an adjunct position with the advanced video production class, which is my bread and butter, my one of my favorite classes. I look at Megan because she had to suffer through one of my first times teaching that class. Um, but we have a lot of fun. We, we, we talk a lot about not only um, news videography, but we also go into all the different forms of video that are out there. And it's something I'm really passionate about is finding all the new uses that we see with video in the world of marketing and communications. Um, I'm involved also with EHC-TV that Dr. Lauder mentioned earlier. Uh, EHC-TV is a weekly student-produced news program. It has news, it has sports, it has feature interviews, and it's all done by the students. I'm there to help advise, I'm help there to really mentor, um, but they do all the work. Um, they're the ones that are responsible for producing content, um, and we have a lot of fun. And, you know, I was telling Connor before we started this call, one of the things I'm really proud of is the investment that Emory & Henry has made in our EHC TV studio. Um, this fall, we're debuting a brand new professionally designed set. Uh, it's ginormous, it's exciting, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a lot different than what we've had in the past and it really rivals anything that you'll see on your evening newscast. So I'm really proud of what we have there. We have great studio cameras, we have professional lighting, uh, it's the real deal. The experience that you'll get on EHC TV, whether you're a camera operator, whether you run our audio board, you direct, or if you're on on-air talent, um, it's, it's exactly the world of work that you'll be experiencing once you graduate. And uh, we're really excited about that opportunity that we can provide to people. And we also provide mentorship. You know, I really work with our local um, television stations to connect people in different positions to be able to really have that feedback of what it's like out there, what they see there's room in pr for improvement on. Um, so we, we really take that opportunity to um, connect to the world of work and oftentimes it'll lead to a good internship as well. Um, just a little bit about me outside of Emory and Henry. I'm really big, you'll learn on nonprofit because communications plays a big role in non, the nonprofit world. It's a really valuable skill to have. Um, so I've been involved with an organization called the Birthplace of Country Music. It's in Bristol. Um, and I serve as the vice president for the board of directors there. Uh, I get to meet lots and lots of people that work in various different industries. Uh, and I, I really love finding opportunities to, to place our mass comm professionals because one of the things you'll learn about our department is that um, the types of jobs that are out there for, for communications professionals is very, very surprising. There are places that um, you wouldn't think that there's a need for communications work or marketing work, 
um, or graphic design work, but all these places need those skills. So there are lots of lots of job opportunities out there. And, and it's one of the things I'm really passionate about is exposing our mass comm students to those opportunities. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this chapter of my life to, to be eventually moving to uh, the faculty full time right now. I'm in graduate school. So, uh, you know, I can give you some advice on that as you start to think about that as a path as you graduate. Um, I wanted to quit the first week of graduate school. I'm glad I didn't. Um, and I'm really enjoying the process right now. So uh, I'm excited to see the students and, and get back to campus this fall. Great. Thank you. That was perfect. I hope the prospective students are getting an idea of what the what our program is a little bit about. I am very honored, as busy as our alums are with their jobs, uh, particularly during this uh, crazy time, I've got two um, that joined us today, and they're far enough along on their career journey that they've had some different positions. And so I wanted to introduce uh, them to you, and I'm going to ask them to tell a little bit about your career journey. And if you want to intersect how, you know, the program, you know, hopefully helped you prepare for your career journey so these students can get a feel of whether our program is the right fit for them. I'd like to start with Sarah Knight. She is a uh, 2014 graduate, is that right, of our program. And she, I'm very interested in hearing Sarah's story because she's recently moved into a new position. So when she gets to that part, I'm going to be really listening. Um, Sarah, what, tell us a little bit about you. You've got three or four minutes. We're, good, we're really good on time. Well, so yeah, my name is Sarah Knight. I graduated in 2014 with a major in communications and a minor in um, business management. Uh, I moved up to DC right after I graduated and my first job was actually for an international nonprofit um, that worked with like oil rigs and it was an event planning job. So I got to do a lot of traveling and event planning, but also got to use um, the design skills that I learned in the beginning and advanced design classes to produce all of the materials along with um, the events that we did. Um, and I stayed in that job for about a year and then I transitioned um, to a advertising job at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts up in DC um, and stayed there for about five years, did advertising for about three and then switched into a strategic management and project management role for our um, development team and our um, $350 million expansion building um, that we built and opened uh, last September. Um, after about five years, I was offered a position for another nonprofit up in DC called Stand Together. Um, and I just started that back in February where I am a, an account manager for our criminal justice reform, our poverty and our um, foreign policy PIs. Um, and so with this job, I get to kind of bring in everything I've, I've learned from the first two jobs and do a lot of uh, strategic management, strategic communications, um, building media plans, um, plugging different news outlets, um, kind of creating projects that we think that we're missing areas in, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, and um, kind of seeing where we can build on um, some of these issues. Um, Emory was really nice because it kind of gave me everything that I needed for all of these three jobs. Uh, I don't think anywhere else I would have gotten design experience, media law experience, writing experience, project management experience. Um, and I've used everything that I learned throughout my four years at Emory and the communications um, department to kind of um, further my career up to this point. So I don't think I would have gotten that if it wasn't at Emory. That's Thank good. you. Anything else? No, that was great, sir. We might have some questions for you yeah. later, but uh, what, a, what a successful career you've had so far. We're so proud of you and some great work you're doing for the world. Um, we also have Megan Henderson joining us today. She's in the class of 2016. Um, she's joining us from London, um, and she's going to tell you a little bit about her uh, career journey. Okay. Hi, I'm Megan. I Graduated in 2016. I'm 26 years old. Uh, Emory feels like a lifetime ago, but it also feels like it all just happened yesterday. Um, yeah, a little bit about my career journey. So I was involved in pretty much any media related thing, probably on Emory's campus. I did um, the yearbook. I did the White Topper, which is the newspaper. I did TV. I did a little bit of radio. Um, so probably overextended myself, but uh, as you swiftly learn on a little campus, you 
you have such great opportunities, it's hard to pass anything up. Um, so I had a really, really stacked resume. So I thought when I left the, the college and I was really excited, um, I thought I was gonna go to grad school, but decided against that, um, which was probably the right choice at the time. Um, but that meant I went home and I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do. Um, the greatest thing about my education at Emory was that I had such a, a wide set of skills, um, but it meant that I wasn't totally clear on which ones I wanted to utilize the most. Um, so I ended up working a part-time job and I also got an internship at a nonprofit as a communications intern um, in Roanoke, Virginia. The nonprofit was called Total Action for Progress. They actually take a lot of communication interns from Emory. I know at least one other student after me who's interned there. It's a great experience. Um, but it introduced me to the world of nonprofits and gave me a real uh, passion for, for using my skills to help people. Um, my partner is a British citizen, so I relocated to London Ooh, July of 2018. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, and shortly after I relocated, I was applying to any communications related job I could find, particularly in the nonprofit sector, and um, found my current position, which is with a nonprofit called Five Talents. We're a small nonprofit. We have three offices one in London, one in Nairobi, in Kenya, and one in uh, Vienna, Virginia, actually, in Northern Virginia. Um, we do primarily uh, micro uh, microfinance and microloans, um, which is a complicated, <laughs> I guess is the only way to put it, but basically what happens is a, a group or a community gets together, they save their money together, and then they loan that money to one another to build small businesses. Um, so we're effectively empowering communities out of poverty and breaking the cycle of poverty so that they can provide a better future for their, for their children and their family. Um, I knew nothing about microfinance when I got this job. I was shocked when they called me and offered it to me because I knew nothing about, um, Africa, about poverty or about microfinance. I have learned a lot in two years, I will say. Um, but my role now is as the communications and events officer. So I manage a lot of social media. I do a lot of blogging, website management, um, event planning, so charity events. Um, I do all external donor communications. So I'm the person that sends out newsletters and writes thank you letters to donors who support us. Um, yeah, and the best part about my education is I'm very fortunate that I use probably every single thing <laughs> that um, I spent my time at Embry building up my resume with, um, and it made me a much more marketable candidate uh, when I was applying for the job. So, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else, Dr. Lutter, that you want me to add? No, no I, I, I think that's great, and I think you both pointed it out, pointed it out the the benefit of that broad-based background and do either of you have direct reports yet i do um i had one at uh the kennedy center and i have four now at this job i i would one of the things that i think that college students don't think about but i hope that you're finding is as you manage direct reports or you hire people to do work for you as i always said in the the design classes, you may not be a graphic designer, but if you have to purchase graphic design, you know what good graphic design is and you know how to nurture and coach that out of people. And so you, you two are moving up now where that is indeed part of it, even if you don't do it yourself. That's great. Well, Connor and Miata, Miata and Emily has joined us. We have shared with you uh, some good background about the MassCom program at Emory and & Henry, and we are awaiting questions, and we hope you have some good ones for us. You can shout them out, or you can put them in the chat box if, you, if that feels more comfortable to you. Anything we can answer for you? Um, so are there any specific classes that focus primarily on like video editing and uh, camera operating? Like I heard him briefly mention uh, both of those, I think. But um, computer editing, I'm very interested in. If there's any classes that follow along those lines, I guess that I guess that's me. So yeah, the the, the way it kind of works right now, Connor, there are two classes that you really dig into those deep. The first one is the 210 class, which is Intro, intro to Electronic Media. Um, that's where we we learn both um, camera operation and video editing in that class. 
Uh, it's kind of mixed in as well with the audio component because as you'll see when you take my classes, um, bad audio can completely ruin any good video project. So yeah. audio also, uh, but the big class for you will be the advanced video production class. And that's where we will learn um, not only uh, more advanced techniques with the video capturing and editing, uh, but we also learn the various different uses of, of video as well. And in case you want nerdy stuff, um, we uh, we work with Adobe Premiere Pro, which is really one of the professional standards. Out. Oh, yeah. I've been wanting to get that editing software for a while now. Uh, but it's, I think it's like $4 a month. It's not even that expensive. I currently use Filmora, if you've ever heard of that. I have, which yeah. Is, yeah, that's what I use. So I would really be interested in upgrading and learning how to use that. Do you guys have access to Adobe Premiere Pro that like I could use on a computer and or something in the school? Yeah, we do. We have labs that we, a teaching lab that Professor Treese uses. I will say that we've also used that for the graphic design classes, which I also teach. However, um, we find that most of our mass comm majors that are pretty serious about moving into that get a subscription to it or go ahead and purchase it for their own computers. Um, and for the last time I taught our beginning uh, publication design class, I required students to subscribe to it for the semester, which was $20 a month. Um, and I kept the textbook cost to, to almost nothing. And so there's a convenience of having that, but most students that major will go ahead and get the whole Adobe suite, um, which will cover video, audio, graphic design, Photoshop, Illustrator, the whole thing. And they find that they really do that. Also, we have a very popular um, marriage between the art graphic design track in the art department and the mass comm department. And those folks just live in the Adobe Creative Suite. So they'll typically get that. So there's kind of a move toward, you can, and you can get a student rate. So you can investigate that on the Adobe site and you can get a student rate. Awesome. Yeah. More questions. Hmm. So I heard one of you guys mention a trip that you did to Cuba, right? Um, so you said that we're going to do, that's something I would definitely be interested in because I love traveling and it would be kind of cool to connect that with mass communication. So I heard you or somebody mentioned something about um, a project they were doing with audio. Uh, what was that again? I don't think I really got a clear picture for what it was. Yeah, so one of the things that we want to do, uh, uh, it's so easy to, to make a trip that just goes to a place and, and, you know, we all behave like tourists, but, you know, this is an educational institution. And so we want to um, try to enhance our opportunities uh, to learn while we're there. And so what we've done with this course is that each trip, we do a different sort of a mass comm project alongside with it. Um, the last two trips, as I mentioned, we did, or the, the last trip, we did a very successful um, uh, documentary film. The trip before that, we did a not as successful documentary film. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, the plan for our next trip is to do it as a uh, podcast course. And so, oh, a podcast, that's what, okay. Right, and it, it'll be an audio podcast. And I think the plan is going to be for students to work in teams to develop stories, essentially, that they'll um, produce while we're on the trip, um, and then we'll take back and we will post-produce them uh, late, you know, after we come back. So you know, we'll um, collect a lot of content, we'll ask students to think about um, what kinds of stories they are hearing, what kinds of stories that they feel like are important to tell, either their own stories of what they're experiencing while they're there, or maybe the stories of people that they encounter on the trip. And then oh, we'll cool. put those into uh, short you know, uh, pieces that we can run as, as sort of audio, audio um, podcast. Awesome, so like interview people and uh, just discuss what your own experiences are and stuff? That's right. That's right. That sounds very fascinating. Yeah. I think uh, one of the most uh, popular components of the uh, documentary last time was the, um, the uh, what do we call them? We, uh, we, we made students do uh, sort of personal vlogs every night, right? We gave them a prompt and we asked them to record just a few minutes of them talking um, about what they did during the day. And, uh, you know, it was a great way for students to reflect on what they were seeing and what they were doing in Cuba. And uh, it turned out to be a very productive way to develop content as well. Awesome. 
Mm -hmm. I was going to add to what Dr. Finney said, in addition to this, the great opportunity through the department, all, all Emory and Henry students are required to have some sort of international experience. And there's different ways you could do that in addition to Dr. Finney's class. I believe Megan did an internship abroad. Um, you know, I said you could do internships anywhere. If you came up with some sort of audio video project that you wanted to go to another place and do, I'm sure that one of us could mentor such a project. We actually even have an Appalachian uh, semester a trail with, and I think Dr. Finney has mentored a project for someone who hiked the Appalachian Trail one semester. So there's lots of ways to individualize some travel um, to wherever you want to go and tie that into coursework or media projects in a, in a variety of ways, including if you did a semester abroad and you wanted to take some communication courses in another country and transfer those back in as electives in our program. So a lot, lot of good opportunities to individualize and make this program your own. Awesome. I would definitely want to do something abroad. I'm actually on the outdoor adventure team. Uh, so I was actually considering doing the Appalachian uh, thing for a semester, depending on circumstances. Like maybe I want to go somewhere else. I'm not really sure yet. And you can do multiple things. So, I mean, you can go to Cuba and go on this, the Appalachian Trail and do an internship with Megan in London. You can, you can, you know, it's possible to make multiple things work. Awesome. That would be great. <laughs> Uh, Emily or Miata, do you have any questions for us? I don't have any questions. No. Did we answer everything? Yeah, you did a pretty good job. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you guys so much. That was fantastic. And I greatly appreciate the alumni being able to come on and take time out of your busy day um, just to come and talk to our students and also for us to be able to recirculate this information for incoming students, prospective students, um, anything like that. So anybody, if you have any questions after this, you're more than welcome to reach out to myself, reach out to Dr. Lauder, Dr. Finney, Brent, um, at any point during this process, whether you're coming this fall, in the spring, next year, definitely let us know any questions we're always more than happy to answer for you. And I'll add to that if you go to our website and you just quick search MassCom, our, our web page will come up. There's a tab for faculty. All of us are listed there with our email addresses. Feel free to, to email anytime. Um, we'll connect you. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, that you might have or connect you to someone. We, we had two alums here today, but if you're interested in a particular area and you would like to talk to an alum working in that area, I'm happy to connect you with someone. I, you know, I, I, uh, I had a, a prospective student one time said, well, I wanna to come to Emory and Henry, but you don't have a marketing major. And I said, well, we don't, but we have a lot of students who literally have marketing manager, former students in their title, and Sarah was one of the alums that talked to that student. Um, so we have, we have students doing all sorts of things. So if there are alums doing all sorts of things, happy to connect you um, to, to someone in that way. Well, thank you all so much. And everybody have a good evening. And Megan, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Thank, thank you, you all. Guys. Thanks, Tracy, for the opportunity. Uh, Connor, Emily, Miata, you take care. All right, you too. Hi, everybody. Bye.